Hey everybody, it's Brian, and welcome to the, wow, the 90th Qt tutorial with C++ and GUI programming. We are just flying through these. Um, my window may look a little bit different. Um, let me explain here. It's because I upgraded Qt Creator to 2.2.1. So if you have a different version, it may look a little funky. Um, I know they kind of change things up a little bit, and as you can see, the menus have kind of changed. You've got a Qt Quick Project, Qt Widget, and you get like a GUI application, mobile application other project, console, and it's kind of neat how they move things around. You see how there's like an HTML5 application now, uh, designer widgets, empty projects, etc, etc. Um, we're just going to stick with, for this tutorial anyways, the tried and true cute console application. And we're going to call this uh, tstream for text stream. And let's just go ahead and put it in the usual location. And it says, uh, Qt Creator can set up the following targets for the project, desktop. And this is your build environment, basically. You can go ahead and customize this pretty much any way you want to. And then version control if you use it. And just next, next, finish, finish. And same thing as always. Um, they've just, you know, modified a few things here and there. But it's pretty much the same application. And it's, I think it's a little better than previous versions. But, you know, that's just me. I'm kind of picky, though. All right, so first thing we want to do is we want to add our includes. We're going to say Qt Core. And I took a poll out on the website, and uh seems like most everybody wants more networking. And I'm not quite sure if you want more networking applications or more networking theory. So um, just drop me a line and let me know which one. All right, so today we are going to be covering, drum roll, Q text stream. So if we go out to the help system, type up in Q text stream, and you can read all about it in here. And it says the Q text stream class provides a convenient interface for reading and writing text. Um, and as you can see from the sample code they have in here, it's a very convenient class. And we're just going to go over a very simplistic example of reading and writing. So first thing we need to do is make our write file because we need to write out a file. And then we're going to read a file. So say void read. And in our program, we're just simply going to help if I could keep my cursor in one place. We're going to read the file, and then we're going to write, or, I'm sorry, we're going to write the file, and then we're going to read the contents. Got a little ahead of myself there. So let's tackle the write code. We want Q file, and we'll just call this file, and we want to give it a constructor, and we want to give it a file name. Now, if you remember from previous tutorials, if you've even seen them, the Q file class opens a file and closes a file and does things of that nature. So what we want to do is we want to say e, or you know actually put it where wherever you've been building these, e test, and I'm just going to say my file dot txt. Now you notice these forward slashes even though I'm on a Windows system. Well, that is the um, I think they call it the universal slash. Um, basically on Windows it would be like this. The problem with that is that's an escape character. It would be expecting something like slash r slash n. So Qt has done kind of the ingenious thing of saying, okay, use a forward slash, and it will work on Windows or Linux. So obviously you wouldn't have an E drive in Linux, but it would be something like that. Simple enough, but you know it warranted a little explanation. And then we're just going to say if file, and we want to open. Now, because we're opening a file, we need to tell it how we want to open the file. And to do that, we say Q IO device because you know Q file is a descendant of QIO device and we want write only because we're going to write to the file and then we want to say or Q IO device and we want text now some of you may be wondering what does that do well what we're saying here is we're saying we want write only access and we're oring that's what that little bracket here means. We're oring text mode. Some of you may remember, like the old days, the FTP, I still do this, where you have to specify whether it is a text file 
or a binary file, where we're writing a text file. And the difference between the two is the way Qt will process the information. It'll process specific characters a specific way. Um, I know it's kind of a complex topic, but just know that if you're writing text, Qt's going to do some processing on it. So what we're saying is, if the file is open in write mode, then do something. The first thing I always do is I make sure we close that file, because we've already opened it. And then I make sure we flush the contents. Um, flush is kind of an interesting topic. It's kind of like flushing a toilet. Think of this file object as, well, unfortunately, a toilet. And you're just going to throw stuff into it, and then when you're done, you're going to flush it down to the hard drive. I know, bad analogy, but it makes people snicker every time. But the reason why you do that is because you want to close the file. That way it doesn't remain open. You want to flush it. That way all the contents are written to disk. Now, one would argue you don't really need to call flush because it's called automatically by most classes, but better play it safe than sorry. Give ourselves a little uh, little notification here of what's going on. We'll just say file written. Now comes into play Q text stream. And what Q text stream does is it actually creates a stream. What is a stream, you ask? Well, I'm glad you ask. I know, I've been watching Mythbusters way too much. Anyways, a stream is, um, well, like a stream, like a river. It's just a steady stream of information. A stream doesn't really care about a beginning or an end. It just dumps information into it, and it goes. So we use this stream object to stream data into the file. And we're going to say hello. And then we're going to add some return. And let's just say world. We're just going to do a simple, you know, hello world. I know it's been overdone millions and millions of times, but there you go. So that is how we are writing our file. Let's break this down really quickly. We're creating a Q file object. We're giving it a file name. We're saying if file.open, meaning if we can open the file using write-only mode and text, or I'm should, I should say using write-only in text mode, then we're going to create a Q text stream stream the information into the file, flush it and close it. Now, you should know that you should call stream.flush because stream is the one writing into the file. Think of stream as a buffer. It's like a river or stream. And you're going to throw like a piece of paper into the stream and it's going to float down the stream. That's actually probably not why it's called a stream, but it's the best analogy I got. So, you guessed it. The read code is actually very, very similar. Give it a file name, say file.open, and we want to change the mode because we don't want to write, we want to read only. Still keep it in text mode. We we'll want to make a QText stream once again, and notice how we're giving this a reference to the file. And then what we want to do here is slightly different. We don't want to flush because, well, we're not writing anything. Doesn't hurt to do that, but you don't really need it. But what we want to do is we want to read every single line in that file. Granted, we know the context of it already, but let's say we're reading somebody else's file. We don't really know what's in there. So let's go QString, and we'll just call this line. So we're going to make a variable called line, and we're going to read each line out of here. So we're going to say do. And we want to do while not line is null. Meaning what we're going to do is we're just going to keep reading this and we're going to keep reading the file line by line until we get a null line, meaning there's nothing there. So I'll say line equal, and you guessed it, stream read line. And you notice how it says qint64 max len? Well, what we're saying if we were to specify that is the maximum length of the line. We're going to grab it no matter what size it is, and then we're just going to print it out. And then, of course, once the line is null, meaning we've hit the end of the file, we're just going to close it and say the file's been read. So there's our application in all its beauty. Let's try to run this and see if we have any problems. And wouldn't you know it, we got a good build. So we writ wrote the file, almost said we writ the file. We wrote the file, and then we're reading it. Hello world, hello world. And you notice this blank line right here, this quote-unquote. Where is that coming from? 
Well, if you remember, we did a slash r slash n after each one of these. That's where that's coming from. It's just a new line, so it's a blank line. And then we hit the end of the file, and it says file read. So that, in a nutshell, is QtextStream and QFile and how to read and write files. Um, I should warn you that in the real world, um, reading a file typically indicates you want to do something with it. So I know I'm going to get a bunch of messages saying, well, Brian, what about this file? How do I read this? How do I read that format? Well, that gets into document object models and file formatting. That's something we're um, probably not going to touch too much on because there's a hundred, jillion, trillion different types of files out there and we couldn't possibly cover them all. But we are going to cover XML next because that's a very popular file type. Anyways, um, this is Brian. Thank you for watching. And I know I push it quite a bit, but uh, go ahead and visit my website. Go to Tutorials. Uh, sort by cute and then you can find all the tutorials and the source code out on my website. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention is a lot of these tutorials have been driven by your guys' user feedback and I'm really thinking about plucking down the cache and getting the cute advanced 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 books and just plowing through those and seeing and I mean, they cover like a lot of the rich text and document object models and things like that and, and I've got a copy of the advanced book but there's a couple other books out there I kinda wanted to buy too. So let me know if you guys have any other book recommendations. I know some of you people out there watching these videos are actually gurus in yourself because you've kind of pointed me in the right direction when I was wrong. So if you know of any good books, let me know. Anyways, I'm babbling. This is Brian. Thanks for watching.